Hi Monica, well I just want to show you how to do this eye. Uh, at the moment what I've got is I've got a PNG and then I've got a JPEG. The JPEG is a flattened version of the PNG file. So to create the eye and have actual control over it in the texture palette, what we can do is we can create a Sphere 3D here which I'll pull out. I'm going to go down to initialize and just set this on 16, 16, 16, 16, sorry just 16 and 16. At the moment you won't see anything because I haven't gone into edit mode. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that polymesh 3D. Right, so now we've made that polymesh 3D, I just want to check the floor and I'm just going to rotate this round. So I've gone to the side, I'm going to go to rotate, just rotate this flat. The reason I'm doing that is because I want the iris to be the centre point. So in other words, I want it to be this part here on the polyframe. Okay, so um, the problem you're getting is uh, you're using a, let me just put this into a basic material, you're using something like a PNG file. So first of all, I want to show you what will happen with a low res version because when you poly paint this, it only looks at these little points and it paints the vertexes in. So if I go to RGB here and turn Z add and Z sub off and 100% and I go into something like red, um, or I fill it with a white first of all, so I go into color, fill with color there, then I choose a red and I use a standard brush and I just paint. You'll see, all right, good, I just make that, thought I'd already done that. That's annoying, okay, uh, fill that, okay. And I paint, you can see it's very crude, but if I go up through subdivision levels, control D, control D, control D, then it's a lot better. Yeah, so that's one aspect of poly painting. It uses the actual points. Okay, so let's go back a couple now and just get this back to a nice thing like that. The also the other thing I want to do here is I want to show you now what will happen when I subdivide and use a PNG file. Okay, so let's subdivide this and use a PNG file. So I've subdivided that up to and we'll just make sure it's up high enough. I'm just going to divide it one more time, top to six. I'm going to go to texture and I'm going to import a PNG file that I've got on my desktop. This is the PNG file. So the outside of this is actually transparent. So I'm going to open this up and then I'm just going to add it to Lightbox. So I'm going to come down here and just hit add to Lightbox. So let me just close the Lightbox down there, put this in the center and then move this into the middle of the eye. And I'm using the edge of the um, sphere to actually gauge my size. I'm going to bring this down to about that big for this demonstration. Press Z on the keyboard. Remember that I have got, I'm on the standard tool and I've got Z add Z sub and all of these RGB and RGB intensity at 100. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a big brush size. I'm just going to paint around that and then I'm going to get rid of that and then we're going to look at it. So we've got these horrible pixelations going around the edge there which is not good. So let me press the control Z to go back and this time I'm going to go in and load a JPEG in here. So now I've got this JPEG which has got a nice white background on it. I'm going to click open and then I'm going to add that to the light box. So I'm going to go there, add to light box, close this down and do exactly the same as we did before. Put that in the center, put that in here looking at the circumference of the sphere and actually then just scale it down and go and press the Z key and paint this in. Now this has got a slight echo around the outside but it should even capture that once I've finished. So I'm pressing the control and the Z key to get rid of that. And if we zoom in, we can see we are now nice and sharp because we're up on the resolutions. Okay, so that is your problem is with the PNG file. Now you might open the PNG file in Photoshop and see that it's actually nice and crisp around the outside. The problem is that because we're painting via, via actually vertexes, the problem is that um, it, it increases that stepping with there already being an alpha on that on that channel with the PNG file, it, it sort of highlights it and makes it even more evident when you've got the stepping of the vertex color painting in here. So there is another way around this that I haven't looked at. If I leave this painted and pretend it's the bad version, okay, what I can do is I can take this out into um, Photoshop. So I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to load up the PNG, you know, the bad version, just to show you what we can do. Let's just um, turn the light box back in and paint this over the top. 
actually I don't think this is the stepped version <laughs> let me just go uh, Z move this out the way and go and grab this one here in there something like that blow it up I'll just put it round about here this is the bad PNG version so here we go around the outside we've got that horrible stepping as we had before control Z okay so we've got that horrible stepping going on which we want to get rid of so what you can do is you can do some UV mapping and unwrapping so if I bring this down to the lowest subdivision level and at the moment we look at our poly groups and we use the control key just to select across half of our model let me just go across here and press the control W this will polygroup this into its own polygroup now I'm actually going to come along a bit further with this because I only need that much of the eye so I'm pressing the control W okay what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to unwrap it so I'm going to go into the plugin and I'm going to go down to the UV master and I'm going to unwrap by polygroups keep the symmetry and I'm going to unwrap now I'm going to have a look at that under the UV tab down here and we'll quickly do that morph UVs so there we go I've got a really nice flat round circle there that's perfect so I know I have the texture on top of that so what I can do now is I can actually create the texture map so I can come in here and um, under geometry take this to the highest subdivision level and then just turn polyframes off there come down to my texture map settings here and create new from polypaint this will create this what I can do now is I can clone this texture out which appears over here come in here and go export we can export that to our desktop I'm just going to export it out there I'll just call it I it's a PSD file so I'm going to go save I'm now going to close down and I'm going to open that eye up inside Photoshop and then I'm going to load that one on top of it so here it is here I'm now going to just open my good version remember I'm going to use the same PNG file remember that it's really important that you actually remember I'm using the pixelated PNG version same version that we created that from I'm going to press ctrl A ctrl X to cut that then I'm going to press ctrl V to paste that in there I'm going to come down there and I'm just going to put it straight in position there okay now I'm going to flatten this layer ctrl E now I'm going to export this out save as I'm going to save it as a JPEG and we just call it I click save maximum come back into this and now load this back up so I'm going to click here and I'm going to sorry I need to come into texture I need to import and I'm going to import this new version that we've got I'm going to now select it in here which is this one here and straight away it's going to look better now it is showing a little bit of funniness around the outside and that's basically because our UVs need a bit of changing but that's really easy to do if you've done my armor course this will be clear to you what you need to do but basically what's happening is the UVs are uh, sort of smoothed it's using the low level UVs when we pasted that on there so you need to tell it that it needs to re UV to the high subdivision level which is this button here so if I turn smooth UVs on and hit re UV now it will become crystal sharp so this is not what you're seeing here is not the poly painting okay this is the texture Okay, not the poly painting. If I turn the poly painting on and turn the texture off, it will go back to what it was before, which is that version. So this has got the texture on. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could actually send this to the, um, you could use this, this texture map and you could send this to the poly painting and it should fix that issue because you're no longer, because it's a flattened version, but uh, you'll no longer have that alphaing. But we don't want to do that because, um, you might as well just use the JPEG that you were using earlier however if you do want to um, transfer this texture onto the poly painted version you can come down to poly paint and you can go poly paint from texture you can hit that and it will automatically look better however it won't be as sharp as the photoshopped version and that's why you'll see a lot of people using things like substance painter that uses a different kind of uh painting it doesn't use the vertex um 
and you'll see a lot of people using Photoshop because of that sharpness that you can get with a Photoshop file over the poly painting techniques. If you look at the difference there, it's massively different. Okay, just so you know. So there you go. I know, you know, with ZBrush, um, you have these limitations. Maybe they'll have a, um, a better way of doing these kind of things later. You can also send this across to Photoshop as well, and you can send this actual 3D across to Photoshop and paint it in there. But um, just the export and the editing in Photoshop works really well, and that will give you a nice clean eyeball. So if I put that into the toy plastic, for instance, down there, then you've got a nice little thing going. You can still see that pixelated squares. I press Control D, and then it's a little bit better. So there you go.